morning, YouTube, and happy Thursday. I hope you had a wonderful week with your students. I am in early this morning to copy a test for the AP class. They are being tested on acid-base equilibria today, so it's, it's a biggie for them. Um, so I'm gonna get going on that, but this video is all about how I'm teaching stoichiometry differently this year than I have in years past. I'll be sure to check in with you guys a little bit later because I actually have not one, but two prep periods today, so I have a little bit more time and I'll give you all the details. I just finished with all my classes for the day and as I talked about this morning, I wanted to talk to you about some things that I'm doing differently when I teach stoichiometry this year. My students really didn't have the authentic chemistry experience last year. In fact, our stoichiometry really just stopped with mass mass calculations. We didn't calculate limiting reactants or excess reactants. We didn't even look at percent yield. And so this year I knew that my students were going to need some extra scaffolding. And so there's four major changes that I've made to my stoichiometry unit in order to help my students be more successful with it. Now, as a disclaimer, I am only about, I would say about halfway through. We haven't yet talked about like limiting reactants in terms of doing the calculations. My phenomenon for the unit actually introduced limiting reactants from the very beginning. So that brings me to the very first thing that I changed about the way I'm teaching stoichiometry in that I'm using a very simple phenomenon to introduce what stoichiometry is. So literally all I did was give the students a bag of a certain number of bolts and nuts. And then I had the students complete this activity. And basically the bolts and the nuts are supposed to represent molecules. And so in this activity, I asked the students to find the mass of the nuts and the bolts I asked them to actually perform the synthesis of these two things, and I have them combine in different ratios. And then in the analysis questions, I asked them to write the balanced chemical equation for each of these reactions, and then I introduced this concept of limiting reactant right from the very beginning. As the students continue to answer these questions, they start to discover that really they're not able to tell what is going to be what's limiting based on just the mass alone, not even the number of particles. What they really have to do is use the balanced equation, and obviously this is just a model of an equation for the students to follow. The culminating part of the activity asks the students to use dimensional analysis to calculate exactly how many NBs they can make and how many N2Bs given the amounts of each thing that they have. And so this is where I introduce the concept of limiting reactant and excess reactant. And then what I'm planning on doing is once we get into limiting an excess reactant, I'll spend some time reviewing this nut bolt activity and kind of put it up on the overhead and compare it to the different limiting and excess reacting calculations that we'll be doing. Change number two, I have definitely been incorporating a lot more flipped learning into this unit. So they've had so far um, two flipped learning videos, one on mole-mole calculations and the second one on mass-mass calculations. I have found that to be just such a better use of our class time. The students come in, they immediately can start working on problems. I can circulate and help them out. I can even have them work on whiteboards if they wanna have like a little mini lesson with me. It really helps to make sure that you are spending the most time with the kids, actually interacting with them and assisting them with any difficulties that they're having with these problems. Before using the flipped classroom approach, a lot of times I would spend time just going over the notes in class and then the students would be able to do like maybe one problem and then they have to take all that home and finish it at home. I'm just finding that the work is getting done more easily when it's getting done in class and their retention is much better as a result. Which brings me to my next thing, and I know I talked about this about two videos ago, but I've been administering quarter sheet quizzes every single time my students have an ed puzzle. And it's usually just a quick, like one or two question thing, only like very low points, very low stakes assessment. And it just assesses whether or not the students learn what they should have learned from the ed puzzle. So it informs me, like, did they get what they were supposed to get? The students make their best attempt on the assessment. And I can spend some time going over the question in class if I'm finding that the students are all getting it wrong. But I'm finding that Student accountability has been just really lacking this year, and that has really been the only way to make sure that my students are watching the videos to understand. Like, they're actually watching it with the intent to understand. It's not one of these things where they're just kind of letting the video play in the background and mindlessly writing down notes. They're actually really trying to understand the information because they know that they're going to be assessed in class the next day. 
And then the fourth final major change I have made to my stoichiometry unit is I am spending far more time with the students whiteboarding. So I want my students to show me what they've learned by actually whiteboarding the answers. And, you know, sometimes the students will volunteer or sometimes I'll just ask the students to come up and do it. I'll just write their name on the whiteboard. But it's really important for the students to be working and showing you what they're thinking. And I found that I'm able to interject and help them more easily if they're working on whiteboards because like, I can see it a lot better as opposed to just like on a worksheet, for example. And what's also kind of nice is that their peers will see what they're writing too and they can kind of jump in and you know help them if they choose to as well. Whiteboarding has really helped the students to make their thinking visible and it's allowed me to assess them very easily. Um, I love the fact that the students are working together to try and learn the information. I've definitely noticed a lot more collaboration in this unit than I have in previous units as this is often one of the most difficult topics that they're going to learn throughout the school year. And I did absolutely tell them that. You know, I did say to the students, you know, stoichiometry is very, very difficult, incorporates a lot of concepts. So you want to make sure that you're staying on top of it. And what's nice is that they are definitely working through it. And it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it is working very well for me and for my students. You know, just the act of holding them accountable daily, having some sort of practice in class has made a big difference in the students taking ownership and accountability of what they're doing. So if you've done stoichiometry in the past where you've been lecturing in class, I'm going to suggest that you try to flip it right? Maybe include a video on stoichiometry. There's a ton of videos in Edpuzzle that you can search for. If you want to use my video, please feel free to let me know. I'm happy to share a link with you. I hope this video was helpful in giving you some insight as far as how you could use the flipped classroom to really help your students during your stoichiometry unit. If you have any questions or you'd like an example of my video or you want to share it with your students, please feel free to leave a comment down below or you can of course send me an email and I'd be happy to get back to you. I hope you had a wonderful week with your students, a wonderful weekend, and I'll be sure to check in with you guys next week.